bit of a long term review tonight of these uh, Red Wing 875s. Now I originally got these back in December 2014 so this is pretty much a six year review. Um, if you follow my channel you know I like to try out lots of different boots um, and I haven't worn these consistently over the last six years but they've had plenty of wear. You know to be perfectly honest these have been my go to boots if in doubt it's always the 875s, wet weather, uh, sort of country walking, anything at all. These were always up to the job and they've seen plenty of wear. So back in 2017, I had these resold. So he's now got the uh, the Vibram lug on them. So you know, I've really lived for these boots. You know, these soles have you know probably got a year or so more in them, but um, you know eventually they'll need resoling as well. So these have been incredibly well worn. I think maybe you know it, it's time to to share some more thoughts on these. Now I did see a couple of videos very recently from a couple of really great YouTubers, um, Rose Anvil and Stridewise, and that kind of inspired me because they, they shared some insights into the construction of the boots uh, and the brand, um, and they, they covered off a couple of gaps in my knowledge, so that was really useful. So if we start off with the sole, um, obviously these originally came with the, uh, the very familiar uh, Red Wing Christy sole, as you find on the uh, 1907s here, as you can see, not had anywhere near as much wear as these over the years, but you know, already smoothing out there and, and certainly on the heel, uh, wearing over to the side there because I over pronate. In fact, actually on that side, I think it's supinate, but you know, that is very much exaggerated with the Christie sole. So that's why I opted for a swap out. You know, just a bit of variety. I went for the, uh, the Vibram lug. This was done by Red Wing uh, UK, and they did a really great job. Um, I think they, they popped a shank in there. Feels plenty uh, firm enough underfoot. You know, there's no sort of fatigue at this sort of heel point. So I think that it's nicely supported with the shank, uh, and and this is really a very good sole. It's it's lasted a lot better than the uh, the Christie. Um, but it doesn't quite have that look, if, if that's what you're about, if that's what you associate with Red Wing boots, um, it doesn't have that sort of 875 look, but really enjoyed having the variety of resoling. What I would say is, is with these soles, it does bring home uh, the sort of the fatigue saving capacity of the, the Christie sole, so that whole foot support all the way consistently across the, uh, the length of the shoe, which you get with the Christie sole. You know, this is a harder sole to spend all day on your feet with. So you can understand why, uh, why sort of certainly in the US, the 875s, the Christie sole, that style of boot is very popular with people who uh, work in industries where you can spend a lot of time on your feet. So moving on to the construction, absolutely faultless. Never had a drop stitch on these, never any issues or concerns about the, the construction. Historically, I, I I believed that it was an all leather construction, um, which I think is the way to go, certainly on, on the bits which form the shape of the boot at the critical points. So the heel counter, that is leather. And that's really critical because if you crack a plastic heel counter, heel cap, um, that's your boots done for. You can't really get that fixed. Having a leather heel cap, ultimately it may soften over time, but it's never gonna have a catastrophic failure. Now on these, they kept their structure wonderfully, uh, even with the sort of uh, overpronation or supination, whatever we're going to call it. Um, they've kept a good upright uh, structure to keep your sort of foot aligned. Now, on the toe cap, I also believe that to be an all leather construction because I've had toe caps fail, um, most notably on thoroughgoods where it started to crack away from the, the main structure of the boot prod your toes, absolutely catastrophic failure again. Um, having seen Rose Anvil's most recent video where he's chopped a pair of these in half in, in the Rose Anvil way, um, this is a composite uh, toe cap, which was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, but equally, um, it's tucked away under a, a leather liner rather than a fabric liner. And six years in, there's no indication that there's any uh, degradation of that structure. Again, picking up on, on some insight from Rose Anvil, who's obviously a leather worker and really knows his stuff. The leather, you know, absolutely bomb-proof, 
no complaints at all you know to be honest it's a standard set all boots by you know this leather's absolutely fantastic um what he did explain is this is a chrome tanned chemical treated leather rather than veg tanned leather so for leather snobs um it's not quite as good as you find on some boots probably your your whites and your nicks but to the price point absolutely fantastic leather and um, really really no complaints Moving on to the sizing, um, pretty much most boots I get I'll describe as my choice being true to size. So I'm a UK 8, which is a US 9, and these are also a UK 8, uh, US 9. So a lot of people talk about sizing down. For me, that would have been absolutely the wrong thing to do with Red Wings because I find that the D width fitting is relatively narrow. Um, I know that in the US you can get a selected number of these boots and I think Japan as well and you can get them in a, a double E I think uh, or maybe an E fitting in the UK we just simply don't have that that choice and on width um, these are the right size and, and length absolutely fine as well now in terms of break-in absolutely the toughest toughest boots I've ever had to break in um, and I'm sort of 30 boots into my uh, into my sort of hobby here so very very difficult to break in um, much more challenging than the 1907s which benefit from a slightly sort of higher top box uh, sort of toe box rather um, but yeah very very challenging um, you know really really need to take it easy with these wearing them around the house in short amounts of time going for short walks um, I, I decided to sort of plow into it just thinking you know how hard can this actually be and the answer for me was it was very hard um, the, these are tough to break in um, certainly the the stitch structure pinches down on your toes as the, the, the folds are created um, but with a bit of time maybe a little bit of extra condition, conditioning uh, that's the way to go but it is worth the effort because for a couple of months of dis discomfort or periodic discomfort you've got a pair of boots which is you know six years old coming up for another resole and you know they will do that with with good ease so really really I you know very much worth the uh, worth the effort I think probably the last thing to talk about is maintenance now I kind of like my boots running a little dry um, because it draws out that sort of variety of, of colour and the, the patina and these have pretty much got as dry as I, I'd like them to get you know there's a little bit of lift where you can see the oils moving around and, the, and even in the driest spots but you know we're coming into winter they need a little bit of love and you know whilst in the past I've stripped them back down with saddle soap uh, I'm going to simply go for a, a basic conditioner and uh, a waterproofer so I've got a couple of things you know I've used Chamberlain's leather milk in the past very good um, but I think I'm going to go for the, the two-part uh, Armstrong's all-natural uh, treatment it's been a long time since I've used this and uh, well, it's been a long time since he's been treated at all so in terms of, of care the main thing on uh, any boot really is the stitching certainly around the welt so you want to really brush out um, the, the dust and the debris on that um, obviously you want to take the laces out and brush out the uh, the bellows on the tongues now these laces uh, just as an aside you know these are the original laces and whilst they're a little bit threadbare um, or a little bit sort of tufty they've still got all their integrity and structure excellent really good as well and then it's a case of just rubbing the uh, the treatment the conditioner in letting that soak in and then coming back with the uh, the boot shine as they call it for Armstrong's all natural now one thing which always frustrates me a little bit with uh, boot treatments is the amount you lose into your uh, cleaning rag and you know whilst that gets saturated it won't be quite as good as next time so what I'm trying this time is actually just rubbing it in using my fingers but actually wearing a pair of uh, nitrile gloves uh, just to uh, help out that process and hopefully uh, get into the nooks and crannies and provide uh, and remove any sort of loss there so the conditioner's had a few hours just to soak in and it's really doing quite nicely as you can see a real sort of uh, change in the colour of the boots it's, it's really darkened to sort of a, a deep sort of brown and a conquer brown I'd call it um, 
part of the reasons why I like to run my boots a little bit dry because I prefer the sort of slightly lighter tan uh, colour that they sort of acquire when they're a bit dry but if you want a happier um, more supple and waterproof leather really you know you do need to condition them it's just a uh, aesthetic reason why I don't do it quite as often as some uh, so yeah the lace has been obviously popped back in I've taken off the little flag uh, lace stays um, just to change the look a little bit and, and a little bit of a pain actually because they can never quite lay down quite straight so I thought change them out, change them out for a little bit and uh, take it from there uh, seeing the American flag it reminds me of uh, something that, that a couple of people have commented on uh, over the years on my reviews on uh, Red Wing boots and I think the comments are somewhere along the lines of you know I prefer to buy a, a boot which is made in America or buy from a brand who make their boots in America which always confused me because you know quite clearly on the inside it says made in the USA and I did always wonder what that was about um, interestingly uh, Stridewise did do a, a, a video on Red Wing and sort of like 10 facts about Red Wings I think it was something like that and he did uh, finally uh, to my view sort of put uh, so a bit of context onto those sort of statements and what it is is these heritage brand or these heritage line boots are 100% made in the USA that's what I understand um, but some of the work specific boots the more technical boots um, that, that you would buy solely for, for your workplace they are actually made uh, abroad and that's that's where the, this discussion starts so you know actually these are American made boots they are heritage boot um, uh, and that's why I was a bit confused about those statements. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. Um, one thing to say is that I was really pleased to see, see today that I'd hit the 16,000 subscriber mark um, for a small channel like mine, which is just a, a hobby in my spare time. Uh, really, really pleasing. It's taken a long time to get here, but thank you very much to everyone who's made that happen. Of course, I'd love to have a few more subscribers. So if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please do. If you think this is a useful video, please give it a thumbs up of course um, and if you haven't seen my channel before please check it out lots of uh, boot content uh, high quality denims bit of everyday carry fountain pens pen knives that sort of stuff um, please do check it out uh, you might find that we share some other common interests also I'd really like to build up my Instagram uh, if you you are on Instagram and you want to see an occasional, and I don't post every day, so I'm not going to fill up your feed, um, but occasional sort of boot and related uh, sort of posts. Um, I try and only sort of post images which I think are, are sort of quite interesting. Uh, so please do follow me there. I'd love to build that up as well. Okay, well, that's about it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.